Welcome back to our series on estate planning. My name is Zach Mangles, and I'm joined by my colleague and fellow advisor, Lisa Peters. In this section, we are going to answer some of the frequently asked questions that we hear from clients when we're talking about estate planning with them. Our first question is, what does an executor or trustee actually do? So in handling the estate, the executor is legally responsible for sorting out the finances of the person who died, generally making sure debts and taxes are paid and that assets are properly distributed. The, the examples of some of the things that you might be doing as an executor include notifying banks of the death of the person, opening bank accounts in the name of the estate, making sure tax returns are filed, checking on required payments from IRAs, uh, managing property and upkeep, preparing for the sale of property, attending to those digital assets and social media accounts, and the list goes on. Yes, you can um, ask for help from the estate planning attorney, um, but this is still a lot of work. And although we find people are very happy to, to take on the, this role, it's extremely time, confusing, time consuming and overwhelming. I oftentimes will recommend that people do look into hiring a professional fiduciary firm who can help with some of this work. They are typically charged by the hour. It's very reasonable rates. Yeah, I mean, you, you can expect that your role as trustee or executor when somebody passes away, you can expect that to last up to 18 months. And I've seen it go even longer depending upon the complexity of the estate plan. Um, and it gets even more complicated or it takes even more time when not only are you serving this role after a person's passed away, but if you're also the power of attorney or trustee while a person uh, is incapacitated. So, you know, you're doing all of that work that Lisa was mentioning, but you're doing it on an annual basis. So, um, you know, if a friend or a family member asks you to serve as the trustee or power of attorney, I think that it really helps to think about it like it's a part-time job. You know, you're, you're paying medical bills, you're having discussions with doctors, you're having discussions with investment advisors and attorneys, and all of those things take up a material amount of time. Uh, the second question is, what should we think about and discuss before we meet with our estate attorney? I, I think that there's four key elements or maybe four critical questions to ask yourself when you are about to meet with or planning to meet with an estate attorney. The first one would be, who's going to make the important financial and medical decisions on my behalf during my lifetime in the event that I can't do that for myself? The second question that you would ask is, who, who would I want to raise my children if they're still minors? Um, the third question is, who's going to receive my assets? Um, I think that it helps. I, I, I break it down at, at the highest level into three different buckets in terms of who, who can receive uh, assets from your estate. You've got heirs, which are individuals, and that can be anybody, children, siblings, friends, strangers. Um, you've got charity as a second bucket. And then, of course, you've got government as the third bucket. Um, the government comes in, in the form of estate taxes which in the environment that we're in right now doesn't apply to a lot of people because the estate tax exemption is so high, but still, you know, that is still a bucket that, uh, that is, makes sense to, to keep in mind. Um, and so then the fourth question would be, now that you have that ideal breakdown of, you know, how much you want to go to heirs versus charity and, you know, maybe, maybe to taxes, is how should they receive these assets? You can structure it any way you want. Um, you can have your heirs receive the assets immediately and outright, like they just, they get accounts that are just turned over to them. Um, you can have it held in trust for their benefit for their lifetime if you wanted to do that. You can provide them with access at certain ages. I mean, the, the options are really unlimited, so it helps to, to think about the ideal way that you would want your heirs and charity to receive assets before you go meet with an attorney. You don't need to know the technical details of it, but just conceptually, what would you want to have happen? Great. Another question we hear is, what is the process that an estate planning attorney will take you through? Well, first, a good attorney needs to be an excellent communicator, but they also have to be a good listener. You'll likely have two to three different meetings with the attorney to acquaint, acquaint them with your situation. 
and to um, time for drafting documents, to answer questions, and a third to sign documents. By the end of the process, you should understand your estate plan, have your signed documents, and uh, marching orders as to how you might change titling of assets and beneficiary designations. And just a, a note that's super important that if you have a revocable living trust, that all your assets ideally should be named um, and titled in such a way so that they are covered by the trust. Our next question is, how often should the estate plan be revisited? Well, whenever there's a change in sentiment about how you want to leave your estate or when you prefer another person to be your health code proxy, for example, a major life event will trigger a need to have the estate plan revised. Birth of a child, adoption, um, a new grandchild, marriage, divorce, or a change in your capabilities of your beneficiary. And also, of course, we might note the estate plan, uh, state taxes do change frequently, um, maybe not in the last recent years, but at one point in time, uh, estate taxes were an issue if you had estates over $600,000. So absolutely necessary to see your estate planning attorney should estate taxes change. Um, and then what sort of general advice do you have? I hear that question a lot. Um, I'd say I have two pieces of advice and they're both related with each other because the, the issue that I see the most often uh, is clients who have started down the road of either working with an attorney and to have the documents drafted and they haven't completed it or they're still sort of in that thought process before they've met with their estate attorney. Um, so so my, my thoughts are these, is estate planning is just as much about the present as it is about the future. And I think all else being equal, it makes sense, or knowing that all of these documents can be changed, you know, nothing that, nothing that in these five main documents that we've talked about is permanent. You can revoke them, you can update them whenever you want. So I think knowing that, it makes sense to make sure that your present day circumstances are handled in the ideal way possible. If you don't have that sort of future contingency figured out already, that's okay. Uh, as Lisa just said, there's, there's gonna be tons of reasons along the way that you're gonna be updating your estate plan anyway. So just make sure that the future is handled and then you can start to deal with some of those uh, other decisions uh, out in the future uh, when those come. I think the, the other related piece would be don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You know, and, and I say that they're related because you don't have to get every last piece of your estate plan figured out. If you're 95% of the way there, just go ahead, meet with your attorney, get those documents put in place. Because at the end of the day, it's better to have something than nothing. We talked in an earlier section about the risks of not having an estate plan. And um, it, it can really work against both you as well as your heirs if you don't have anything in place. Yeah, and I would add, don't underestimate the value of flexibility. Estate planning is an art and a science. The science, if you will, is that whole basket of technical tools and strategies. And the art is knowing how to judicially use these techniques in the most beneficial way so that the end result doesn't end up being unnecessarily complicated or inflexible. Another question we get is, what is our role as advisors in the estate planning process? So, Mac, Zach, you mentioned there were four critical questions to think about before seeing an attorney. Well, we might be able to help in those discussions with our clients. Um, in some circumstances, clients have asked us to attend meetings in which we're happy to do so with their attorney. And then we periodically re will review the estate plan when we meet with clients from time to time. And since we are more likely to talk to our clients on a regular basis than our clients do with their estate planning attorney, it's likely that we're going to hear new information, new goals that would make us think that or suggest to the client that they should go see their attorney for a revision. So thank you for turning in to or tuning in to part two, Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, in our next section, we're going to cover estate planning considerations for a young adult by studying the uh, case study of Bob Bender.